Hello and welcome to this web video cast on in vitro fertilization from the Reproductive Science Center of the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm Dr. Lou Weckstein, Medical and IVF Director. Right now, there are hundreds of thousands of Americans who have been unsuccessful in trying to conceive a child for more than a year. By definition, they are infertile. Conception is a complicated process that depends upon many factors working just right in concert, including the production of healthy sperm by the man and healthy eggs by the woman. So complex is the process that millions of Americans are affected by infertility, and it is not mainly a female problem. In fact, about 40% of diagnosed cases of infertility are due to male factors, and another 40% are due to female reproductive issues. In the remaining 20% of couples, they are contributing factors from both partners, or doctors can't find a particular cause. We call this unexplained infertility. The most common male infertility factors include azospermia, which is when no sperm cells are produced, and oligospermia, when too few sperm cells are produced. Sometimes sperm cells are malformed or die before they can reach the egg. And in rare cases, infertility in men is caused by a genetic disease such as cystic fibrosis or a chromosomal abnormality. The most common female infertility factor is an ovulation disorder. Other causes of female infertility include blocked fallopian tubes, which can occur when a woman has had pelvic inflammatory disease or endometriosis. Of course, a diagnosis of infertility doesn't mean the end of hope. Don't give up. There are still ways to help you get pregnant. You don't know what your issue is going to be. You don't know if you're going to find out that you can never have children. You know, that was a possibility. We didn't know that coming in the door. But we, they were very um, understanding and compassionate and said, we're going to take, these are the steps we need to take. And then, you know, they'll tell you after, after this test, if it comes back this way, we go in this direction. If it comes back this way, we go in that direction. And they give you, all, they tell you what all of your options are right up front. And you're never, I never felt pushed to do anything I didn't want to do. Today, one of the most popular treatments is in vitro fertilization, or what we refer to as IVF. IVF is simply the uniting of an egg and sperm in a laboratory. The developing embryos are then transferred into the uterus through the cervix with a relatively simple outpatient procedure, and hopefully, a pregnancy occurs. The usual IVF cycle consists of five phases. The first phase is ovarian stimulation and monitoring. During your IVF cycle, a combination of medications will be given to encourage the growth of several eggs and ensure their final development. When the eggs are ready, a doctor retrieves them under the guidance of a vaginal ultrasound. It's typically a short procedure under a light anesthesia. After egg retrieval, your partner provides semen for processing and insemination in the lab. The semen sample undergoes microscopic analysis to identify the strongest, most active sperm. These sperm are then placed with the eggs in a petri dish to accomplish the fertilization. That's where the term in vitro comes from. It's Latin for in glass. After initial incubation, an embryologist examines the eggs to verify fertilization. If fertilization is achieved and the embryos develop well, we transfer them to the uterus after growing them in the laboratory for up to six days. Well-developed embryos that are not used during the current cycle may be cryopreserved or frozen for subsequent use. The final stage of IVF is embryo transfer. It's a brief and painless procedure of placing the embryos into a small tube that is passed through the cervix and into the uterus. Throughout this stage, the patient takes hormonal medication to encourage implantation and pregnancy. Now you may wonder if you're a good candidate for IVF. You might be a good candidate for IVF if you're experiencing problems with blocked fallopian tubes, severe endometriosis, ovarian issues which prevent the release or production of eggs, or if the male has low sperm count or motility. Also, couples with unexplained infertility can be very successful with IVF treatment as well. Of course, IVF does not guarantee a pregnancy but the success rates of IVF have been improving for many years, and recent statistics are very encouraging. Since IVF was introduced in the United States in 1981, through the end of 2002, almost 300,000 babies were born as a result of reported assisted reproductive technology procedures, or ART. The average live delivery rate for IVF in 2005 was 37% 
for women younger than 35, much better than the 20% chance in any given month that a reproductively healthy couple has of achieving a pregnancy naturally and carrying it to term. In 2002, approximately one in every 100 babies born in the United States was conceived using ART. If you're at the point where you're ready to try, go for it because, you know, holding your own child in your arms, there's no better feeling than that. <laughs> once, once they were out and everything was okay and they were fine and you're holding this beautiful child in your arms and you're just looking at them and saying, wow, I, I just can't believe they're here. It just seems like all of that emotion, everything that it took to get to that point, all the difficulties, all the ups and the downs, it, they were gone. When choosing an IVF clinic, it's helpful to know the clinic's services and success rates. So it's important to ask the right questions. You should ask questions such as, will I get personalized care? What is the clinic's pregnancy rate per embryo transfer? And what is the rate of delivered triplets or more? That's because high order births are actually quite risky and we do everything we can to limit them. For those worried about costs, we have a special alternative called the Shared Risk Refund Program. Shared Risk allows a patient to pay a package price for multiple IVF cycles. And if they do not deliver a healthy baby, they get most of their money back. This in turn encourages patients to transfer fewer embryos in each IVF attempt while not sacrificing their ultimate chance of success. You can learn much more about the Shared Risk Program on this website. I don't know how many times we got in the car on the way home and you know, both said, you know, well, so-and-so was just wonderful, or mm -hmm. Dr. Wexstein was fantastic, mm -hmm. and you know, just what a nice guy, and uh, yeah. he really came through. Mm -hmm. In fact, there is much more about virtually all IVF topics on this website. This is just a brief overview. For more information, please click on the link to podcasts to download an audio recording with more details, or point your mouse at the button for patients at the top of any page of this website, then on Infertility Explained, and then click on ART on the far right. From everyone at the Reproductive Science Center, thank you for spending time with us to learn more about IVF.